Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use partial fractions to integrate a rational function with distinct quadratic factors in its denominator. To complete this problem, we'll set up the decomposition and solve for constants, and then integrate the decomposition. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to use partial fractions to take the integral of the rational function that I've written here. Our first step with any partial fractions problem is to ensure that the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, meaning that the largest exponent in the denominator is greater than the largest exponent in the numerator. In this case, that's true, so we can move on to the next step. If it weren't true, for example, if we had x to the fourth in the numerator, and x cubed in the denominator, we'd need to use polynomial long division to simplify our rational function. But in this case, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. And our next step will be to factor the denominator of our rational function as completely as possible. So the denominator will factor into the quantity x squared plus 4 times the quantity x squared plus 1. We always want to factor as completely as possible. In this case, this is as far as we can go. Once we've done that, we want to set this equal to our partial fractions decomposition, which we'll put over here on the right hand side. So our partial fractions decomposition, what we do is we separate each term in the denominator, each factor in the denominator, into its own fraction over here on the right hand side. So we'll put the first factor x squared plus 4 into its own fraction, and we'll put the second factor, x squared plus 1, into its own fraction like this. Now the question is, what do we need to put in the numerator of each of these fractions? Well, when we're dealing with quadratic factors, meaning that the degree of the factor is 2 or greater, so we have x squared plus 4, the degree is 2 or greater, that means that it's a quadratic factor. If it's x to the first power, or just x, so for example, x plus 4, that's a linear factor and the process is different. But in this case, we have two quadratic factors, and whenever we have a quadratic factor, what we want to put in the numerator is a constant times x plus another constant. So in this case, we'll say ax plus b. Since this fraction over here has a quadratic factor in the denominator, we want to do the same thing but we've already used constants a and b, so in this fraction we'll put cx plus d to distinguish the difference between these constants. Now that we have the setup for our decomposition, we want to go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator from the left-hand side. So we're going to multiply both the left and right-hand side by the quantity x squared plus 4 times the quantity x, x squared plus 1. When we do that, the entire denominator will cancel from the left-hand side, and of course we'll just be left with x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 1. When we multiply that denominator by the right-hand side, specifically this first fraction here, the x squared plus 4 factor will cancel from the denominator here, and we'll just be left with the quantity ax plus b times the quantity x squared plus 1. The trick I would use for remembering this when I was taking tests is just I'm always left with a factor that's not in the denominator. So because x squared plus 4 is in the denominator here, obviously I know that the other factor, x squared plus 1, is the one that's going to be multiplied here by ax plus b. Same thing over here, when I multiply this entire denominator by this fraction, the x squared plus 1 will cancel, and I'll be left with the quantity cx plus d times the quantity, the other factor, x squared plus 4. Now that I've eliminated all of my fractions, what I want to go ahead and do is expand the right-hand side over here. In other words, multiply all these terms together. So when I multiply the quantity x plus b times the quantity x squared plus 1, I'll get ax cubed plus ax plus bx squared plus b. And when I multiply the quantity cx plus d times the quantity x squared plus 4, I'll get cx cubed plus 4cx plus dx squared plus 4d. My goal now here is going to be co to collect like terms. So I want to pull together all of my terms involving x cubed, all of my terms involving x squared, all of my terms involving x, and all of my constants. So notice here that I have ax cubed 
and I have CX cubed. So I, what I, what I want to do is pull those ter two terms together and factor out the X cubed. When I do that, I'll get A plus C times X cubed. I'm going to do the same thing for each of these, these other factors. So notice here that I have BX squared and DX squared. If I pull those together and factor out an X squared, I'm going to get plus the quantity B plus D times X squared. When I bring my AX and my 4CX terms together and I factor out an X, I'll get plus the quantity A plus 4C times X. And then when I bring my constants together, B and 4D, I don't have to factor out anything because these are just constants. So I'll say plus the quantity B plus 4D. The reason for collecting terms like this and factoring out the x variables is now I can equate coefficients on the left hand on the left and right hand side. So I can say the coefficient here on x cubed, right now this is an empty box because the coefficient is just one, but I can say that the coefficient on the x cubed term here, one, is equal to the coefficient on the x cubed term on the right, a plus c. So I can set those equal to each other and say one is equal to a plus c. In the same way, I can set the coefficient on the left-hand side on the x squared term, negative two, equal to the coefficient on the x squared term on the right-hand side, which is b plus d. So I can say negative two is equal to b plus d. Again, I can take the coefficient on the x term here, which is just one, and set that equal to a plus 4c, the coefficient on the x term on the right-hand side. So say one is equal to a plus 4c. And then finally, the constant on the left-hand side, one, can be set equal to the constant on the right-hand side over here, b plus 4d. So I can say one is equal to b plus 4d. This is basically now a system of simultaneous equations that I can use to solve for the constants a, b, c, and d. I've collected my equations in this way. I've grouped the equations that have only a and c involved here on the left and the equations that only have b and d involved over here on the right. That makes it easy for me to solve for the constants. So what I'll do over here on the left is subtract this entire first second equation here from the top equation like this. So when I do that, I'll get one minus one, which will give me zero on the left-hand side. I'll get a minus a, which again will give me zero, and I'll get c minus four c, which will give me a negative three c. That gives me zero equals negative three c, which gives me c is equal to zero. When I plug that back in to my equation at the top here, I'll get one equals a plus zero, and I can see that one is equal to a. So now I can start documenting that I have solved for some of my constants. I'm going to do the same thing over here to solve for b and d. I'll subtract this entire second equation from the first equation. The reason I can do it is because I know looking at this equation that if I subtract the second one from the first one that my b's will cancel and I'm looking for one of the variables to disappear so I can solve for the other one. I did the same thing over here with the a's and the c's. I knew that the a's would cancel when I said a minus a. So I didn't have to manipulate or do anything extra to this. So when I subtract, I'll get negative two minus one, which will give me a negative three. B minus B will just give me a zero. And D minus four D will give me a negative three D. When I divide both sides by negative three, I can see that D is equal to one. And when I plug D equals one back into this first equation over here, I get negative two equals B plus one, subtracting one from both sides, I get negative three equals B. So I can indicate that I've now also solved for B and D. What this means now that I have all four constants is that I can plug each of these four constants back into my partial fractions decomposition here and then integrate that.
So I've saved our constants up here in the upper right hand corner. What I'm going to do now is plug them back into our decomposition. So I'm going to have the integral of here ax plus b over the quantity x squared plus 4. Well we know that a is 1 so we'll get 1x and we know that b is negative 3. So we'll get plus negative 3 divided by the quantity x squared plus 4 and then we have plus cx plus d. Well we know that c is 0 so we'll get 0x plus d is 1, and we'll divide that by the quantity x squared plus 1 dx. Now I want to simplify this, so I'll get x minus 3 over x squared plus 4 plus 1 over the quantity x squared plus 1 dx. With any partial fractions decomposition problem, once you get to this point, you're probably going to want to look at breaking these fractions apart as much as possible into separate integrals to try to make this easier. So what we'll do is we'll break apart this first fraction, x minus 3 divided by x squared plus 4, into 2, and we'll break them into separate integrals. So we'll get the integral of x squared plus 4 dx minus 3 times the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. So what we did there is we separated it into two fractions, this first term in the numerator x divided by x squared plus 4, and then the second term in the numerator negative 3 divided by x squared plus 4. And in the process, we pulled the negative 3 out in front of the integral to leave just 1 over x squared plus 4. We can't simplify our second fraction at all, so we'll still just say plus 1 over the quantity x squared plus 1 dx. And now that we have this simplified, we want to go ahead and start integrating. The first fraction here, x divided by x squared plus 4, we're going to need u substitution for. We'll set u equal to x squared plus 4. We'll take the derivative to get du, which will be 2x times dx, and then we'll solve for dx to get dx is equal to du over 2x. Our second and third integrals will be using this formula up here that I didn't mention yet, but the formula is for the integral of 1 over x squared plus any constant. So in this case, with our second integral here, a will be 2 because notice we're taking a constant squared. A is a constant and we're saying a squared. So we're looking for essentially the square root of the second term here and the square root of 4 is 2. So we know that a in this formula will be 2. And what this formula tells us is that 1 divided by x squared plus a constant squared is equal to 1 divided by that constant times tangent to the negative 1 or the inverse tangent of x divided by that constant again. And of course, c, the constant of integration. So we're going to be using that formula for the second and third integrals that we have here. So let's go ahead and for this first integral, make our substitutions with u. So we'll say x over u, because remember we set x equal to the denominator, x squared plus 4. And then we solved for dx. So for dx, we got du over 2x. So those two are multiplied together. And then we have our second and third integrals here. So we'll get minus 3. Now the integral of 1 divided by x squared plus 4, again we'll use this formula. And notice that we're setting everything equal to this here. So we'll get 1 divided by a. We know that a is going to be 2 because we're taking the square root of this con the constant that's in this position here. And the square root here of 4 is 2. So we'll get 2 times tangent to the negative 1 of x divided by, again, a is 2. We'll leave the constant of integration for the end of our integration. So now we take the integral of the, the third integral here, and we'll get 1 divided by 1, because the constant here is just 1, the square root of which is 1. So 1 over 1 tangent to the negative 1 of x divided by 1 and now we can add our plus c, our constant of integration. We want to go ahead and simplify as much as we can. Notice that we'll get the x here to cancel, and we can pull the 1 half out in front. So we'll get 1 half times the integral of 1 over u 
du minus, we'll say, 3 halves tangent to the negative 1 of x over 2 plus tangent to the negative 1 of x plus c. And when we integrate 1 over u, remember that the integral of 1 over a variable like this is the natural log of the absolute value of that variable. So we'll get 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of u, and then the rest of our integration. Our final step is just to plug back in for u. So we'll get 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value. Remember that u is x squared plus 4. So x squared plus 4. And then minus 3 halves tangent to the negative 1 of x over 2 plus tangent to the negative 1 of x. And you can go ahead and leave it in this form. Sometimes you'll factor out a 1 half just to make this a little bit simpler and get rid of the coefficient on the natural log and the tangent to the negative 1 here, but you don't need to. You can leave it in this form and this is your final answer. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.